Welcome back to Team Talk episode two. Why am I shouting? I've got the phone. Listen, listen. You need to say, welcome back to Footy Consultancy. Because oh. that's the name of, oh, of our thing. This okay. one is tough. Get away from me. It wants to be the third presenter. Right. Okay, I feel like I'm really close. Should I do it? Nah, I'm doing it and it's my turn. We want to know who's the best. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> Just Why do you think? Comment below. No, we don't know. We don't proof. Comment below. Welcome back to the Fitty Consultancy channel. I'm joined again by Ellie. Today's topic is stadiums. So we're talking about women's teams playing in men's stadiums. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You know, what do we think about it? So the reason we kind of thought we'd talk about this topic is obviously recently Man United played in Old Trafford for the first time. First time the women's team were there. That had a lot of conversation around it because people on the one hand were quite shocked. Other people were questioning the decision. So what's your thoughts on it, Al? I think... You know, as a sort of um, exposure perspective, it's unbelievable um, for, to see the women in those facilities and, and being able to play in, you know, the best stadiums in the world is, is such an amazing opportunity for them. But also it's going to spread the word even more about women's football. Um, like even even when it happened, one of my boy mates said to me, oh, oh, like I've seen you post on Instagram about Man United playing at Old Trafford, the, the women's team. Do they not do that every time? And mm -hmm. I was like, no, they don't. Like, this isn't a normal thing. It's it's only just happened in the last six months or so. Obviously, you had um, Tottenham and Arsenal ladies. They played last year at um, Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, the <laughs> new city, yeah. I couldn't think of the stadium then. It's because I hate Tottenham. Uh, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I'm an Arsenal yeah, fan, so I yeah. complain. And you say that, we yeah. like. <laughs> so they played there. Um, obviously, West Ham women, they played... Mm -hmm. Um, at West Ham Stadium and I know Chelsea played at Stamford Bridge as well so I think the more opportunities that the women get to play in these stadiums the better it's only going to produce more exposure obviously with the restrictions loosening up we'll be able to get fans in there and I think it's only going to bring revenue to to their clubs and and more fans being able to connect with the, with the players so yeah buzzing about it yeah, I think, like, you obviously talk, spoke about Arsenal and Spurs. They're like, I know they had a massive crowd turnout. I think it was something around 60,000 or something, something yeah, crazy. And, um, yeah, like, when you look at the trends and stuff, I actually done a uni piece on it. Um, it's always when the women are in the men's stadiums that you see them bigger crowds turn out. Like, considering I agree with a lot of the benefits you've brought up there. So, like, why do you think it's still such a conversation point? Why don't you think that's just the norm now in football? Um... I think just because it's only just started to happen in, in mm. the last sort of year or so, um, I think everyone's questioning why it didn't happen sooner. But at the same time, all all of the all of the years that the women haven't played in the men's stadium, I feel like no one really batted an eyelid. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean, like no one questioned that they weren't playing in their yeah. stadium. So um, yeah, I think it just brings conversation because it's 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 all new and it's like the first time and there's always record-breaking crowds, obviously pre-COVID, mm. you know, there seemed to be a record broken every time there was a, a, mm. an England game on at Wembley. So, you know, it's just so exciting. And I'm, I'm really glad that it's giving young fans the opportunity to, to go to games because I imagine the atmosphere at a women's game is so different to a men's football game. Mm -hmm. So for, for young girls and, and young boys, of course, to go and watch the, the women's teams play is, is incredible for everyone. Yeah, I think it's interesting as well to hear you talk about atmosphere because for a long time I was on the fence on whether it was a good thing to put the women's teams in the men's facilities because when I had been to games previously, like my parents were really good at taking me along to matches when I was little and when I was up at uni, I would go to watch Notts County women play in um, yeah. in the county county's ground, Meadow Lane. And on the one hand, it was great because it was, you know, it was easy to get to stadiums usually in a place where you know it's really easy to get to. When I contrast that to Leicester, who play out at Quorn, it's impossible to get there from the Leicester City yeah, Centre. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's that benefit, but there's definitely it, it felt to me sometimes there was something lost in terms of atmosphere. Because I'd go to the count, to county games and there'll be maybe 500 people there in a massive stadium. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a bit on the fence about you know is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And then when I look at facilities like. Um, Chelsea women play in or Man City playing where they are a smaller ground to a professional standard I think there's a really good opportunity to pack them out there but mm -hmm. do you think there's something better to be gained by playing in the in like the the flag mark of the big stadiums yeah I see what you're saying there obviously 
Chelsea playing at King's Meadow, you know, whenever I've watched them again pre COVID, the stadium's full up mm. and it just it seems like a great atmosphere to be involved with. But I, I can see your concern, sort of putting the women in the in the men's stadiums and obviously maybe not as filling them as much as um, where they typically play. Um, but I think to be honest, it's, it's a start. It's never mm-hmm. going to be. You're never going to get a full capacity at Stamford Bridge. You know the first game that that Chelsea women play there. So it's slowly getting there. It's slowly building up. And I think one day, even if if the stadiums are, are half full, that's you know that's a long a long way off from them playing at their their usual stadium. So I think it's just progress. Mm-hmm. And the more we see it as a normality for them to play at the Premier League stadiums, then the better, mm. you know, more exposure. Definitely. And I think if new stadiums can be built with that in mind, that it's going to have men's and women's teams play in there. Because when we talk about it, I'll say women at the men's stadium, but, you know, why can't it just be yeah. Liverpool Stadium or, or yeah. whatever? And I mean, I picked Liverpool as an example. They had a lot of scandal <laughs> recently over their training facilities and not making yeah. that accessible for women well not prior to the women's usage of that space so yeah I do think there's a long way to go but yeah I'll agree with you there it is definitely a step in the right direction um what do you think teams can do more like as a if you are put in a team that is you know linked to a male club or maybe if there's coaches here a part of a male club that have a women's team as part of it how do you think people in the men's setup can be like ambassadors to get in the women's team more integrated in the club I think I think as a club teams within that club should all be really integrated mm-hmm. you have i think you have to be so like together and work as a team and i think it's something that's that can be quite evident in in a lot of clubs and teams across the country where the first team maybe get a lot more attention and and, and the rest of the academies maybe get mm. slightly neglected um so I see what you mean there. I think it just depends on what kind of staff you have behind closed doors and, and how much of a family environment mm. you have as a club. Because um, I think if you if you all sort of work together and everyone knows each other, you're only going to create a, a, a better sort of atmosphere and, you know, build, build the club as a family. So- the reason I ask that question is, like, I think it's all well and good, you know, let's put the women's team in the men's stadium. But that in itself is will only be effective if you have like that support around it and whether that is coaches and physios or whether that's marketing teams mm-hmm. um, and, you know, teams securing sponsorship and things like that to get the word out. And when I think of a team that's done it really well, um, who are lower league, it's Dulwich Hamlet. Like we played against them in an FA Cup game, actually. Mm-hmm. And it was during COVID, but it was during the time when we were allowed fans in and the men weren't and they really capitalised on that and they got all of their men's fans down to watch their women's teams oh, and wow. it was incredible and I think they were one of the few teams that done it really, really well and we played, I don't know, the capacity on their ground was maybe 2,000. I think they were allowed to have 1,000 fans there because um, it was only allowed to fill to like 50% or whatever and they had, they turned out about 800 fans um, and I just think, you know, is it that hard, is it that hard to just make small changes, whether that's they have the women's fixtures publicised around the gate, uh, around the uh, stadium. Their social media is constantly got men's and women's on it. Their women always play there. That's the culture. Like, and I think if you can create a culture where women's football is as normal as men's football, yeah. that's when like you can really start taking advantage of like these mm-hmm. facilities and these spaces. But I think it's a bit chicken and egg. You know what comes first? Mm-hmm. Get them in there, get an audience, and then they'll get all the backing. Or do we put the backing up first? And then that will help draw in audiences. Yeah, and you can yeah. see why clubs are reluctant to take that second route. But mm. it's definitely something I, I've seen movement on, like, in the last few years. Um, and I do think that Man United playing in Old Trafford, if you think two years ago, three years ago, Man United didn't even have a women's team. Like, yeah, that yeah. sort of progress in such a short space of time is really positive for the game. Um, it's just, you know, can they sustain it now? Can Like, like your friend said, can that be normal? Mm-hmm. They just play in Old Trafford. Yeah, hopefully. Well, hopefully it's the beginning of more integration from the, the women's and the men's side of things and uh, you give girls the opportunity to play in these amazing places and it just attracts more fans so yeah definitely well thank you for watching as always you know please like and subscribe and please also interact with us in the comments because i love that thumbs up i just clocked that out of the corner of my eye <laughs> um you know interact with us in the comments what do you want to hear us talking about have you got experiences of playing at um, men's men's stadiums you know how was that so Again, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya. And cut.